Hi everyone, it's Gina from Gina C Creates. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make these Easter shadow boxes using my Easter Bunny Mandala SVG. You can get it on my website. I do have this available right now as my five day freebie. So make sure you hurry up and get it before Wednesday. After that, it will move to my shop. And to get updates, make sure you are a member of Gina C Creates so you don't miss out on the freebies. Once you have my SVG downloaded, it will be a zip file. So you will need to right click on it and click extract all, and you need to save it to the same location. And now you'll have an open folder to work with. So you can open that and you'll find two folders, one that has a girl bunny and a boy bunny. And you can see that the SVG is displaying as a Microsoft internet HTML doc. And that's totally fine. It's because I'm on a PC. When you're on a Windows um, program, it will display the SVG as an HTML doc and have an internet icon. But that's fine. You could totally still use it. Just upload it to Design Space. So we're going to open our folder, select the boy Microsoft HTML doc, and we just hit open. And that's just going to open just like an SVG file because it is an SVG file. It's just your computer doesn't know how to display it. So we're going to go back and open, go back to the folder with the girl bunny and upload that SVG as well. Also known as an HTML doc if you're on a Windows PC. Okay, so now you're going to add the boy bunny and the girl bunny to your canvas. Um, you could just add one if you're only making one for now. And I'm going to zoom in 75% so I can see. And as you can see, these did not upload the correct size. So sometimes Design Space does glitch out and not upload the SVGs the correct size. So we're going to have to resize these to the height to 9.5 on both of these. I did design them to save as a 9.5 in height, but Design Space doesn't always import it the correct size. So we just have to double check and resize it and make sure it's the correct size for this project. And if you're using a different surface, because I'm using a 9x9 shadow box, um, you would have to resize it to whatever surface you're going to use. And to make sure you like the size on your 9x9 shadow box, we could go ahead and recreate the surface. So the surface of a 9x9 shadow box is actually 8.5 inches. So I'm just going to use the shape tool and I'm going to create a square and make it 8.5 by 8.5. So this is going to be our surface to work with. So I'm just going to send it to the back. And now I'm going to see how my bunny is going to look on top of my shadow box surface. And we are going to ungroup the girl because this bow is actually going to go on top of her ear. So you can right click on the SVG and click ungroup. And I'm just going to select the bow pieces to move them out of the way. And then kind of just place them or just like imagine where it's going to be and you can see around the head this is um, the open surface you will have going around i just like to do this to see how proportioned it would be on my shadow box and for the boy one his bow is actually a bow tie so it is going to go directly under his head so I'm just going to move some of these pieces out of the way so you can see this is how close it will be to the bottom and so if you want to resize it you can do so like that um, this gives a better more detail of how it's going to look and I'm happy with the sizes for these so I'm just going to leave it as is so I'm going to remove the box for now and you can also personalize this by changing some of the colors so you would make sure your svg is ungrouped so you can select each shape 
and change the color with the color palette on the top. Or you could come over to Color Sync and instead of changing each one manually, you can drag each shape to the color you want. You just have to make sure you have the color already in the project so you can um, drag and drop shapes to a different color. So that's just another way you can organize your colors. Um, if you do want to create a new color, you do have to come up to the color palette and select it. So it would show up in your color sync. And you can do the same for the boy. You ungroup it. And let's say I want to change his pink nose to a brown nose. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to laugh about that joke for like five minutes. But I'm back now, so we are going to get back to work. I am going to bring back the shape of my surface, which is the 8.5 by 8.5. Because I want to add a name to this shadow box. So I am going to replace it in the center. And I'm going to know my bow is going to go on top of the ear, so I don't have to worry about that. And I'm going to add a name going down the left side. So I'm going to type in Audrey and I'm just using the standard font. I'm going to switch it to bold and I'm going to change the color to pink. And then I am going to go in between each letter and hit return on the keyboard to make this go up and down. As you can see, it's aligned to the left. So I'm going to go to alignment and hit center and now my Letters are directly on top of each other. Audrey's name actually worked out pretty good, but if you have a longer name, you can change the line spacing to make them closer together. Or if you have a shorter name, you can use that to spread them apart. Or you can grab the arrows at the bottom and make it bigger or smaller. But adding the name is totally optional so it's up to you if you want to make these for your children or grandchildren um, a gift for grandma you can add the name so let's get rid of the background and now for this to cut i'm going to cut it with vinyl so i'm going to right click and click attach so it will cut in one piece um, you could cut it with cardstock and glue it it's up to you what material you want to use it with so now I think this project is ready to click make it. So I want two of these to cut on eight and a half by 11 letter standard cardstock paper. So what I'm gonna do is just rotate them and make sure it fits right in between the 11 inch margin and just scoot it over as close as you can. And I'm just checking all my mats to make sure that they will fit on the eight and a half by 11 sheet. And we are gonna cut on cardstock plus. Make sure if, when you're using your vinyl, you're gonna switch it to the vinyl scented. And if you use glitter cardstock, make sure you switch your dial to cut on custom and glitter cardstock. So here are all the shades that I am using out of the eight and a half by 11 cardstock. And then I'm going to use another version of white in glitter cardstock. And then I have my pink vinyl for the glass. And other things you're going to need is your 9x9 shadow box, some craft glue or hot glue, um, your phone tape, um, your X-Acto knife. And now I'm going to use my blue light grip mat. It's best to use mats that aren't brand new and super sticky because it will cause your cardstock to rip or tear. So... I like to use a worn down mat and use blue painter's tape to hold it in place. So now once you're done cutting, you'll just peel off the excess cardstock from the mat. So I make sure to get rid of that first. And then we are going to pull the design, flip over your mat and pull your mat back slowly from the cardstock. And this will help your cardstock not to curl. Um, you could do it this way or you can use your metal spatula to help lift off your design. 
the key is just to keep your cardstock from curling or ripping. It's better just to curl your mat back than to curl your paper. So next you can see some of these pieces didn't pop out. So you could just go in with your finger and they should pop right out easily just to remove all these pieces that didn't come out. And then next we are going to clean off our mat with our big Cricut scraper. Just make sure you press firmly down at an angle and scrape off all those tiny pieces to make sure your mat is clean for the next cut. So I went ahead and cut all the pieces out. So your bunny will have four layers and the bunny's face will have different pieces. So you're going to have to place those by hand. And then next we have our bow. So I'm going to show you how to prep your foam tape for these really tiny um, mandala lines. So I like to lay a piece of foam tape down and with my X-Acto knife, I'm just going to start making slits that are really thin and prep all my foam tape so I can just grab them as I glue them down. So now we are going to put the bunny together. So I'm going to start with the back two bottom pieces and I'm going to flip it over and put foam tape along the back. Um, these are kind of big pieces, so you don't need to make these foam strips too small, just whatever you're comfortable with. And you can even cut them to make sure they curve to the shape. And just make sure you pull off all the backing pieces before we place it on. So we're going to flip this piece over and lay it directly on top of the bottom piece. And get it the best you can. And then we are going to add more foam tape to this white solid piece. And we are just going to place it directly on top again. And then press down. And so now we could do the tiny intricate pieces of these tiny foam strips. Usually I lay parchment paper down so it doesn't stick too much to the mat. Um, they kind of just slide off of parchment paper, but I just failed to do it in this video. So go ahead and place your foam strips all around the circle on the nose and the eyes and then around the ears. And then we're going to place this directly on top. Just make sure it covers all the edges. Press firmly down. And now we are going to use hot glue to add the eyes to the face. So for the girl, the eyelashes should be out to the edges. And I do have a placement on the mandala to show you where the eyes go. And the same thing with the nose and the mouth part you can see where to line it up on the face. And then we are going to just add the colored nose on top. And then we can move on to the bow. So the bow has two layers. So we just need to glue the center and the sides and layer it on. And then we are going to fold over one side to the middle and the other side so it matches up. Place some hot glue so we can hold it down and place it onto the back. And then we grab the tiny strip, put glue on the front and the back, and wrap it around to close. And now her bow is ready to be placed on her ear. So we just add some more hot glue and place it like so. And now we can open up our shadow box and place the bunny in the direct center. And I'm just going to use foam tape on the back of my bunny to hold it in place. So I'm just going to cut strips again to fill the head and the ears. And you can also glue it down with hot glue. It's up to you how you want to adhere it to the backing. So I'm just going to put this back into the frame. And now I'm going to use my permanent vinyl and transfer tape and place it onto the side of the shadow box. 
and pull off my transfer tape. And this, I'm done. And you could repeat this process with the boy bunny. I hope you guys enjoyed this project for Easter. So make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.